In this video we're going to do some comparisons on Nokia's Lumia Windows Phone 8 devices 520, 620, 720, 820 and 920. We'll look at some results from the camera in just a moment but let's talk some specs first starting with this low-end device the 520 you can see 5 megapixel camera no LED flash so entry level going up to the 620 same camera module 5 megapixels but adds an LED flash 720 different camera module 6.7 megapixels LED flash Different camera module again, 8 megapixels, dual LED flash, and again, 8.7 megapixels, LED flash. But those are just sort of the basic specifications. We'll get a lot more from looking at some more detail. What about aperture, for example? Well, f2.0, f2.2, f1.9, f2.4, f2.4. So the 720 is actually the best here. Great for low light performance. Gets more light into the sensor. Uh, in terms of the actual physical sensor size, well, we can tell you about the top three the 920 it's 1 over 3 as it is for the 820 here and for the 720 it's 1 over 3.6 these will be something less than that that's kind of where you have to base all the specifications from it's how big the sensor size is that obviously has an impact on the pixel size and so these are three definitely superior to to those two as you'd expect given the pricing of the two devices but there are more elements to it than that for example both the 920 and the 720 have backside illuminated sensors and the 820 doesn't so these two will be superior and actually that's borne out in the results as you'll see the 920 and the 720 definitely sitting at the top of the heap of course the 920 has something else as well it's actually branded pure view written on here and it has optical image stabilization we talked a lot about that in other coverage but what it basically means is very good low light performance and it also is much more forgiving as a camera if you're shaking your camera about when you're taking a picture it will still produce good results and it's pretty unique in the smartphone world the 920 in that respect which is probably why it's the pick of the camera phones here so there we go that's a quick run through the specs now let's do some comparison performance We've taken some shots on all these devices over the last few days we'll now show you some of those results here's our first comparison got all the devices in order here we're actually showing the full capture area here but they've been rescaled obviously because you've got different megapixel counts so all the images are the same size that's actually not very fair because resizing you kind of lose information so it's better to do a one-to-one -one crop i.e the same area of pixels from each image it's a more useful way to do a comparison it does mean the actual area that you view will be slightly different depending on the resolution and focal length so we're going to use that in subsequent comparisons indeed that's what we're going to do right now with this particular image so here's the same set of images but with that cropping technique i was talking about you can see the 920 and the 820 with their bigger megapixel count show a, a smaller area compared to the 720 620 and 520 in a brightly lit image like this it's actually hard to see some of the differences but the 920 and the 720 do have better color accuracy and just a little bit more detail showing in the image we'll see some more obvious differences when we look at other comparisons this cat image demonstrates another comparison problem, that of a moving subject. All the pictures are slightly different here. On the 520 it results in a slightly different white balance and colour interpretation. All the photos here are pretty good, demonstrating that if you're in good lighting conditions, all these cameras will produce good results. However, I do think the 920 and the 720 are the pick of the bunch here. Notice the detail on the whiskers and the fur, also the background and the foreground. The 820 is arguably a more attractive picture, but it's not quite as accurate. It's a good example of how these comparisons are somewhat subject. It's in edge cases or difficult conditions that you'll see the most obvious differences in camera comparisons. Here we can see the 920 and the 720 are way ahead of their sister devices. That's because the 920 has optical image stabilization, allowing for a longer exposure, letting in more light. And the 720 with its f1.9 aperture can let in more light for the same reason, resulting in a better picture. Something similar can be seen in this landscape comparison was taken in very overcast conditions. At first glance the 520, the 620 and the 820 produce a more attractive photo. The 720 and the 920 have slightly more muted colours, but they do have more detail and were more accurate as to the colour that was actually present at the time, so therefore should be considered the winners of this particular comparison. In this macro shot of a close-up of a daffodil, you can see that all the devices produce a pretty decent result. The 520 and the 620 do have a few artefacts from processing. The 720 and the 820 sit somewhere in the middle. 920, particularly the detail on the stamens and the water droplets on the petal, produces the best result. But again, it's a good example of how in good lighting conditions it's difficult to spot a difference that's even more true if you zoom out and see the full extent of the image and here's one from the 520 and here's one from the 920 quite difficult to see an actual difference even if you're viewing this video in hd resolution 
This comparison shows a portion of a tree from a landscape image. The 520 and 620 are arguably doing the best job here. That's partly the result of processing, particularly edge enhancement. Overall, the 720 and the 920 actually produce a better result if you look at the overall photo. The 820 is clearly the worst result here, but that's down to operator error. I was probably shaking the device as I took the shot. I left it in though because it makes an important point. When doing these comparisons, the operator, person taking the photo, is just a bigger factor. And that's true obviously in camera performance generally for smartphones. It does depend on the context of the shot, what you're taking, and all sorts of other things. It's not just about pure performance. But of course, performance is important, which is why I want to return to a low light example for our last two shots. Again, you can see the 720 and the 920 way ahead. The 820 also does pretty well here, certainly better than the 620 and the 520. Now this picture is taken without a flash. If we now switch to one with a flash, we'll see a similar order in terms of performance, but obviously it's a very different image. The 720 and the 920 are doing well here. 920 may be a bit overblown. It is a very close up flash here. 820 does pretty well, as does the 620. But just to consider again the fact of the context of the photo here, a flash does make a difference. So there we've run through some comparisons. What are the results? Well, no surprises. First place goes to the 920. Slight surprise. The second place is the 720. It's got a better camera module than the 820 which goes into third place fourth place well i'll give that to the 620 it does have the same camera module as the 520 but the addition of a flash means it can take photos in a wider range of conditions having had a look at the rear facing cameras let's just have a quick look at the front facing cameras on these devices located at the top of the device here generally used in video calling something like skype or a similar service uh, the specifications well, obviously they're cut down from the back camera, they take up much less space, but the 720 and the 920 here have an advantage, they have the wide angle lens. You'll see that if I bring my finger in from the side, you see they appear first on those two devices and only later on on the other two at the top here. Wider angle lens basically means you can fit more into the photo when you're holding it at arm's length. That's an advantage when you're taking self-portraits, for example. The 720 also has a backside illuminated sensor and it's got an aperture of f2.4. That's the same aperture on the 920. They have higher resolution, 1.3 megapixels. So an HD camera, in other words, these are both uh, VGA cameras on the 620 and the 820. So the 920 and the 720 definitely have an advantage here. The 720 is probably the pick of the bunch. Uh, aside from that BSI sensor I mentioned, there's also some extra elements in the lens that make it very good quality. The 520 of course gets excluded here because it has no front facing camera. Okay, there we go. Quick look at the front facing camera on these devices and that kind of concludes our look at the camera on the Nokia Lumia Windows Phone 8 devices.